Hi, I'm Brenda. Your nutritional tip for the month? Pay attention to labels. Did you know on average, Canadians, North Americans in general, are eating up to 26 teaspoons of sugar a day with their food? I know what you're thinking. I don't eat sugar, I don't add sugar to my food. It's not the sugar you add to your food that you need to be worried about. It's the sugar that's hidden in your food. And I'm not just talking about cookies and sweets and granola bars. The worst culprits out there are some of the diet foods. What happens is when they're taking the fat out of those products so that they're lower in calories for you, they have to make them taste good somehow. So they're adding sugar and fat back into them. You'll find granola bars, breads, rices, especially those little tiny prepackaged foods you buy in the frozen section. Stay away from those. Did you know that four grams of sugar equals one teaspoon of sugar? Think about that the next time you're going to reach for one of those little prepackaged foods. And don't be fooled by brown sugar. A lot of people think that it's better for you, but it's not. It's just molasses added to white refined sugar. And white refined sugar is the stuff that's bad for you. What I suggest is take the time to pre-prepare your own food and snacks so you're not tempted to reach for those little nasty prepackaged things that are loaded full of sugar. So your exercise of the month that I'm gonna give you this month is your kneeling BOSU ball pass. I love this exercise for so many different reasons, but mostly because it's challenging, it's unique, and it's a way to train your core that you've probably never thought of before. Some things to know about this exercise. It's an advanced core move. So before you even attempt this, I need you to be able to do a few things. The most important thing you need to be able to do is activate your core at will. What does that mean? It basically means you're turning on and off your core muscles by thinking about it. I'm gonna give you a tip. You're gonna take your little fingers here, you're gonna find your hip bones, and using your mind, you're going to imagine that you're pulling your fingers together. You're not actually gonna be pulling your fingers together, but when you feel that little tension happen, that means you've activated your core. It doesn't mean you're going like this. It just means you're activating these muscles down here. You should still be able to breathe, talk, walk, and laugh. Next up, BOSU ball. It's fun, but it's tricky. I need you to be able to balance on this ball without having your tippy toes hitting the ground, and that is a tough thing to do. So what you're gonna do when you're kneeling on the ball so you're going to imagine you have a string coming out of the top of your head and that's going to help you balance. The other thing that's going to help you balance is because you've just activated your core muscles. Now I'm going to show you how to do this because you've mastered activating your core muscles at will and you've mastered balancing on the BOSU ball. So This is how we do this exercise. You're carefully going to kneel on the BOSU ball. And like I said, it's tricky, so find your balance. You're gonna come up straight. You're gonna be able to have your arms at your side just relaxed and you're balancing. So once you've got this, you're gonna either grab the ball that's weighted on the floor or get your nice friend to hand it to you. You're gonna balance, you're gonna have the ball. This is step one, this is all you're doing. You've got your core muscles activated, and you're balancing. Then once you're ready, you're gonna stick your arms out like this. You're gonna pass the ball back and forth. This whole time I've been imagining that I have that string coming out of my head. It's what's helping me stay on this ball. You're gonna do this 10 times. I count a left and a right as one. So either count to 10 or count to 20. Once you've mastered this, you can start with the overhead pass. Keeping the one hand up, passing the ball over. Once you're really good at this, you can start throwing the ball back and forth. It's a lot harder than it looks. And once you've mastered this and you think you're really good and you're ready for the next step, you can put yourself on a Swiss ball. The wobble board, the perfect tool to help you on your way to recovery if you've had an injury that's given you a setback. Which brings me to my motivational tip of the month, setbacks. We all have them, we're human. But it's how you handle your setback that's gonna either make you or break you. So you've had a bad day of eating. Don't freak out over it and let it turn into a bad week of eating or a bad month of eating. Take a second, look at what made you have the bad day of eating, 
take a step back, make a plan, focus, move forward. Sometimes our setbacks are due to injuries. Maybe they've taken us out of our normal training, which from personal experience can be frightening. Let me tell you, sometimes this is the perfect opportunity to learn how to train in a different way. It's not always about training harder, it's about training smarter. So you've hurt your ankle from running. Maybe now you have to cross train and get on the bike. Maybe you've got a pinched nerve in your back and you can't do much of anything. You're gonna learn how to fine tune the little muscles you've got inside. It's gonna make you stronger in the end. Think of it this way. As sucky as setbacks can be, usually they're just opportunities in disguise.